Leslie Robertson. I am um, Head of Biological Safety at the TU Delft. Uh, it's my main task and as extra tasks I look after the archive of the Delft School of Microbiology because our first three bio professors were very famous people. And my third job is the great joy of teaching the first year basic microbiology. If you're talking about the safety of the people in the lab, it, the, the greatest risk is usually carelessness. People don't look what they're doing, they don't think about what they're doing, and they drop something. Not at the levels we work at. Don't forget that in Delft we only work at the two lowest of the four biosafety levels. Levels. If you're going to work at higher levels, there are greater risks, but also, of course, then the protocols and procedures take this into account. If you ever get up to the highest level of a level 4 lab, then you have to wear a spacesuit. We have to look at three points when we decide what is under what level. One is the how sick the bug can make people, or animals obviously. The, another one is how easy it is to catch, and also how easy is it, it is to handle. Level one is the lowest level, which is grass, generally regarded as safe. This includes things like baker's yeast and the bacteria that make yoghurt and other food. Level two are the ones that can generally be fixed if they're easily, you know, if they're identified, or they're ones that are harder to fix but also harder to catch. Level three includes the rest of the bacteria and a lot of the viruses. So you have things like cholera, the different E. coli's that can kill people, that sort of thing. You also have viruses that are not so easy to catch. HIV, not is level three because you need the exchange of liquids. Whereas the ones in level four are most nearly all viruses. I think they all are all viruses. Um, they are the ones that are carried on the air and are um, very nasty indeed. The ones that you, you, there's nothing can be done for people who catch them. And I'm not going to name any of them. So we train everybody to work in the labs and we expect them to follow the rules. And provided they follow the rules, there shouldn't be any health problems. It's a, it's a more general problem than just biological safety because you have to look also at the chemicals we use. A few of the chemicals used in the molecular biology lab can be very nasty. Basically though, the safety regulations have evolved over the years. We've added a few of our own. For example, the rule that you're not allowed to work in laboratories in open shoes. That's largely a protection against falling glass. It's got nothing to... I, I did know one student who thought it was to stop dirty feet infecting the cultures, but um, the bugs can't grow up and jump that high. Mm -hmm. It's basically because falling glass is dangerous. You get banned from the building. <laughs> I have a carefully built a reputation over the years for being the bad cop. Depends who's doing the lab work. It's not that dangerous. It's not really dangerous at all. This isn't the 19th century. If you compare, look, if you combine what we do with what was going on back when it was quite common for microbiologists to be killed by their bugs, then it's, it was dangerous back then. But these days, we, I think we go a little bit too far to the other side. I mean, Professor Byerink was actually, one of the things that he did was to taste the colonies on his plates. You know, he was lucky. When I look at some of the bugs he was working with, he, he was incredibly lucky that he got away with it.
I wouldn't do that these days. I wouldn't even taste baker's yeast if it had been grown in a lab. It takes your attention away from what you're doing, and it, as I keep saying, attention to detail is important. Also, of course, um, there are going to be times when your music generator, whatever it is, stops, or you don't like the station that comes on, or you run out of music tracks or something. And I'm willing to bet that very few people take their lab coats off, wash their hands and leave the lab before they adjust whatever they're playing with. And one of my plans for some time this autumn, when I get time to do it, is to go out and buy a very cheap MP3 player and autoclave it and add it to my teaching collection. I know you've all seen my autoclaved mobile phone. I was a little disappointed because I was expecting a sort of Salvador Dali phone to come out of the autoclave, and it didn't. The plastic held up, but the screen, the screen has collapsed. The card has collapsed and it's all... Please though, don't try it yourself without removing the batteries because batteries explode when heated. Why bother? They're busy doing it themselves. You've heard of MRSA. You know, what happens is that when you go home at night, all the bugs get together and swap plasmids like we swap stamps. Um, they're, they're, they're evolving as fast as we're, there's no need for us to make them. Making them deliberately, I wouldn't think so because most genetically modified microorganisms can't compete with the wild types. I'm reminded of a Victorian cookery book with a recipe for rabbit casserole. It starts with the words, first catch your rabbit. If you want a zombie, the first words of the recipe would be, first find your dead body. How many rich biotechnologists do you know? I know one, and it's not from the biotechnology that is rich. I uh, think if world domination by biotechnologists was going to be possible, there'd be few, a few more rich people around. I live in a small flat in The Hague. I don't live in a large country estate in Scotland. Well, these days a lot of them come through our basic microbiology course anyway, and they're trained on how to work in the labs during that. But some students do seem to have a fairly short memory. But um, everybody, it doesn't matter whether they are first years or visiting professors who wants to work in the labs, must pass a biosafety test, which in my case is a large collection of photographs of people doing things wrong, and they have to identify what is wrong in the photograph and tell me why it's wrong. As part of the, bio, the biosafety test, we ask people, as an educating thing, I've never failed anybody on this, but nobody has ever come up with a perfect hand wash, not even me, to prove to me that they can wash their hands. The way we do this is to ask people to use a hand cream which they can't see, but which will give a green fluorescence under ultraviolet light. And basically what people do is to put the hand cream on their hands, and then I challenge them to pretend that they've been in the laboratory all morning and now they want to go to lunch. So they have to wash their hands. And then we just check over the skin. And as you can see, this student has done very well. There are no strange pieces of green turnover. The most common places that fail are around the wrists and around the fingernails. To a bacterium, a fingernail and the area around it will look like the Grand Canyon and a perfect place to hide.
for level four labs, there's only uh, there's only one in this country, and they have a lot more rules that are laid down. For example, you ha have to have a, a first aid certificate before you can work in a level four lab because you have to be self rescuing. The fire brigade are not allowed to go into a level four lab because letting the bugs out is more dangerous than saving people. Maybe you should cut that bit out. Thank <laughs> you.